But let me show you something that has been done well, and then we'll sh look at something that hasn't been done quite All as right. well. So if we go to the login, and we log in with any kind of random password, mm -hmm. random email address, random password, and we try to log in, we will get a message which says invalid username or password. Yep. Now the reason this is good is that this gives us some protection against account enumeration. Mm -hmm. Now what I mean by that is that if it had to come back and said DSHF blah 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 does not exist in the system, yeah. as opposed to this exists but the password is wrong, that would be an enumeration risk insofar as it would disclose the existence of that account in the yeah, system. Yeah, and I could keep trying. And you could keep trying. Now, of course, this depends, whether or not it's important, mm -hmm. depends on the nature of your app. Sure. So for sugar learning, it, it, you know, the, the, sort of the question you've got to ask is, does it matter whether or not people can discover if someone else has an account here? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that was an explicit decision on behalf of SSW or you just sort of arrived there. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's a rule we have for all of our apps. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's interesting you should say that. So, so let's move on. Another place where enumeration is a risk, and to be honest, the login is normally done pretty well. Mm -hmm. Forgot your password is often a risk. So what would happen if we tried this on forgot your password? Continue. Email sent. Now, we've just typed in random, random. gibberish. Yeah. Uh, and it said email sent. Now, if I put in my email address and I have an account on the site, I'm pretty sure it will also say email sent. It will, yes. Now, this is good because what it means is, is the response that you're giving to the users mm -hmm. is the same whether the account exists or not. Yeah. So it's not going to disclose the presence of yeah. the account. So we're good. Now, I would assume <laughs> that this has just sent an email to some random person at some random domain. I would have thought, yes. And that was a... whoever is foo at bar.com, I mm -hmm. apologize profusely <laughs> because you probably got a lot of emails from me. But it would have sent an email to that random account and said, look, hey, sorry, mate, you, you don't have an account on the site. Yep. You know, maybe you've forgotten that you use another email address or something. Uh, whereas, if it was a legitimate account, then it obviously it would send a password reset link or something like that. Or it could just say that without having sent an email to that email address because the back system would know it, that it doesn't exist. It could. Now, the only problem then is that if I register, if, if I actually put in my legitimate email address, but I, I have, say, three email addresses, and mm -hmm. I've forgotten which one I used, and it says it's emailed me, and I'm sitting here going, where's my email? Mm -hmm. That's a usability risk right. in that regard, because then, you know, from a customer perspective, they're going, well, like, what's going on? I thought I had an account. Where's my email? Yeah, and it said email sent. So, so sites that do this well d do send the email. Regardless. Then, yeah, regardless. And there's a discussion we'll have later on about the risk of, of sort of okay. sending random emails to random people. So this is good? Yep. Happy? Yep, I'm good. That's two from two. Okay, right. So now let's see if we can go three from three. <laughs> because here is the next thing. If I go back, and I think we can go back a couple of steps, we can go register. Mm -hmm. Now, what would happen if we tried to register with my email address? Now, I already have an account. Um, so we'll just put in my info again. We'll put in a nice password. Highly secure, of course. <laughs> and let us register. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, right. But okay. <laughs> I've seen this on a lot of websites, though. Is this not... I've seen plain text passwords on a lot of websites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that I wouldn't want someone to try and take my account with an address. But they're kind of parallel concepts. So yeah. And, and let's tackle them separately. So that the first part is that from an enumeration perspective, there is a vector on sugar learning which discloses the presence of accounts. Yes unambiguously, mm -hmm. because I'm pretty sure if I put in a random account there, it's not going to say it's already taken. No, well, no. It because otherwise you'd have a problem. No one yeah. can sign up because <laughs> it goes. Right. You know. <laughs> All right, so, so that is a problem. So if your position is we do not want to disclose the presence of mm -hmm. users on our system, then this is something that you've got to sort out. Now, the, the following question, obviously, is well, what do we do? Like, oh, what just if, well, how do you solve it then? Well, because what if the account already exists? Yeah. And th there's a couple of ways of looking at this. So. The first thing is, is that you've got to give the same response to everybody. Yes. And that's what you're doing on the login page, that's what you're doing on the password reset, which is good. So the response that you're going to have to give here needs to be identical. So how do you then notify the person? And the way you do that is via email. Yes. So what you'd have to say is, thank you for registering, we've now sent you an email. And that mm -hmm. might be, uh, often you're going to send someone an email anyway because you want to do verification. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. is this a legitimate sign up? And in that email, you would then have to say either, great, it's legitimate, and now click here to verify your account so yes. that we know that you've been able to receive the yep, email. Yep. Or, you've already got an account. You've already got an account. Go and log in. Yeah. 
That's really interesting because, you know, it doesn't have to be just email addresses. You see this on Twitter. Twitter is a prime example of saying you have a username, which is unique, mm. and you type that in and it'll say instantly, username's already taken. Yes, but the only thing is, is that the username is not quite as uniquely identifying. In fact, it's nowhere near as uniquely identifying as an email address. Like an email address, I can take, say, your email address, yep. and if, if I see this, I know that almost certainly you've got an account on there. That's true. Um, okay, another example, I think maybe Gmail mm. does show, you can type in you know, this email address yep. at gmail.com, and it'll show you, tell you whether you can have it or not. That is telling you whether that username exists because Gmail is the email providers. It'd be different if you went to, and this gets really meta, but it'd be different <laughs> if, if you went to Gmail and you signed up with, say, your Outlook.com account. It says this Outlook.com account already has an right. account here. Because that is, that is really personally identifiable information. Yeah. All right. No, fair enough. Right. So that's what you'd have to do. Now, the, the other angle on this is people say, oh, but that's really nasty. Like, you know, can't you just tell people that they've got mm. the wrong account? But the thing is, you've you got to look at where the split is, and probably like 95% plus of the time, someone's going to sign up with an email address that doesn't exist, and you'll be fine. And there's going to be yeah. this small fraction of people who sign up, and they've already legitimately signed up. We don't really care about the illegitimate ones. No. Like, if you're just trying to enumerate accounts, we don't care how bad that <laughs> user experience is for you. So for that small fraction of people, they're then going to have to get that email which says, hey, look, by the way, you know, you've actually already got an mm, account, and then mm. go and log in or reset your password or whatever. So that's a, that's a, it's almost like a slightly degraded experience for a very small fraction of people for the betterment of the overall security of the whole thing. Yeah. No, I can see that. that yeah, it makes sense. Now, ag again, the question for you guys and, and something to think about when you go home is, does it matter? Uh -huh. So do we care if we disclose that a customer has an account? So that's a business decision at that point. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is.